All right, so this video I'm going to share with you two ways in which I was able to transform some bad habits that I had, which could have very easily led my life in a negative direction. And instead, I transformed them into things that actually served me and led to more success and my life actually improving. I just I think this is very important and I want to clarify these things because sometimes when we're trying to start making positive changes, it can feel like a real uphill battle. It can feel like we have to go against ourselves. It feels like we have to almost completely reject and deny who we are and the reality of our experience. And of course that feels terrible. So then we usually don't take any action. Whereas I found if we can be more realistic and pragmatic about where we are and maybe lean into that and then find a way to transform that into something that maybe right now isn't ideal, but at least it can help get us moving in the right direction. And then we can then improve and make that more efficient over time. So the first example that I'll give you is when I was in my early teens. And for whatever reason, I realized that I was really kind of checking out from my life experience. I was trying to disassociate or just escape from what, what I was experiencing around me, which might've been a stressful situation, or it might've just been internal stress and emotional negativity. So technology computers was a, obviously a bit of an escape to that. So after a period of time of doing that, I realized that this was what I was doing and that that would probably lead me in a negative direction. So what if I kept doing what I was doing, but instead I focused some of that time and energy onto something that would improve my life. So learning something, acquiring some new knowledge, some new skill or some new information that can then serve me over time. So whether it was, you know, learning guitar or music or learning some philosophy or uh, learning some health related things that then allowed me to make different choices in my life. It was j basically just taking this negative habit that I had and instead, at least in the beginning, turning a little bit to, of it towards more positive and over time that started to gain more momentum to where that thing now became something which was a bit more useful and a bit more practical. And it's something that I eventually was able to just stop doing, not because I decided that I had to, or I forced myself to do it. I was able to stop doing it because I had replaced it with something else that was more functional, more useful, more beneficial. Because if we just strictly focus on removing, then this tends to create a void in our life. It tends to feel, make us feel a sense of loss, which is why we avoid doing things in the first place. It's because we want to avoid that sense of loss. We want to avoid that loss to our identity. Even if that might be great for us, it's still, we want to avoid that. So if it actually is replaced with something better, eventually this, the volume of positivity pushes out the negativity by default automatically. Sure. It might take a little bit longer, but it's more sustainable. And in my opinion, in my experience, it's been a lot more effective in terms of changing a lot of behaviors or attitudes or negative emotional states that I might've experienced. So that's the first example. Second example goes to when I was towards the end of high school, early college. And I realized that I was also liking to smoke weed because it was, I mean, you're, I'm a, you know, I'm in high school and I like to smoke weed for the obvious reasons. It felt good. It was enjoyable. It was funny. Like everything tasted better. Like it was, it was all of these things, or at least that's how it started. And sure, maybe underneath a lot of it was escapism or disassociation or trying to numb or whatever. Okay, fine. And then at a certain point, what I realized, which is what made the biggest difference is I observed that whatever situation or stimulus or context that I found myself in while I was high was intensified, was stronger, was more vivid and rich and deep. So that might just be watching movies or cartoons or eating ice cream sandwiches or whatever trivial, silly things. 
And then one day I said, well, what if I used these qualities of the experience, but then I actually used it to learn something new or to push my bounds, push my boundaries and my sense of self into something that might actually be useful. So to use that to acquire new skills, which at that time was playing guitar and just learning music and learning to be creative in general, because I previously to that was not creative in any way, shape or form. No one in my family was, none of my friends were, it was a completely isolated sort of thing that I was trying to do. And then, you know, learning things about psychology and philosophy or physics or chemistry or uh, religious um, theology or so many different intellectual pursuits that I might have had that I just felt I can't really get into because I just, it's difficult. It's so foreign to me. It's so far outside of my bounds and my frame of reference that I just, I can't do it. I can't get into it. But what if I used this capacity <coughs> of what I was smoking, which kind of opened or expanded or deepened my experience. But what if I put that within a context of something that would actually be useful and practical to help me move forward in a direction? So rather than going deep into a cartoon or a candy bar, I could go deep into a, in a, a mode of learning that I was actually interested in, whether it was guitar or music or, music or piano or um, philosophy or physics or anything else that maybe I was interested in at that time. So what I would do is just, and now looking back, I can see that I was basically micro dosing. Although at the time in 2003, when I was 2002, early 2003, sometime around there, when I was doing this, that wasn't a thing. Smoking weed meant you were a loser and you were a dropout and you had problems and you were ruining your life. That was that that was the attitude surrounding that behavior at that time, as was in the first example when I gave about, you know, being on the computer on the Internet. People said I was a loser. I need to get a life. I have problems and it was wasting my time and energy. It was never going to take me anywhere and I should just stop doing that because that's weird. So oddly enough, these two things that really helped shape and transform who I was as a person and helped lead me in a positive direction, basically every single person in my environment insulted me and personally attacked me and undermined me 24 seven for those actions and for those behaviors, which of course, of course, sure. Maybe there was some validity to them, but at a certain point, actually, no, actually it led me to where I am today. And that was just part of, I don't know how or why I figured this out or what it was. I just listened to my gut and followed my own vision. And then it, Eventually, like I said, the positive pushed out all the negative. So eventually what happened with smoking weed is that what I actually needed and consumed went way down, meaning instead of just smoking six to eight joints and blunts with my friends and just getting absolutely blasted, went from one hit, one small toke off of some high, high quality stuff, more, more or less micro dosing to where I would get the adjustment in my psychology, but I wouldn't really get the intoxication. And I can tell you that I went from being kicked out of college and put on academic suspension because I got really bad grades and I just had no interest and just was really not very intelligent. It was just really not interested in anything. And then when I went back, college was easy. It was a piece of cake. I got A's pretty much effortlessly. And then it went to the other extreme tour. I was just kind of bored of it and lost interest because it wasn't particularly challenging at all. Um, so, but that was through the mindset and the methodologies that I'm sharing with you now. And my point is, is that I eventually got to the point where I just said, I don't even need this anymore because it, I let, I got to, you know, Reishi and I got to tonic herbs and I got to doing meditation and changing my diet and doing different yoga things to where I can modulate my nervous system without the usage of substances or plants or uh, at least plants of that nature. Of course, tonic herbs are still plants and substances, but they don't really have that. Well, number one, they're not, they weren't illegal and they don't have that. They don't have all the negative side effects and cumulative stuff that can build up and, and disrupt the system. So eventually that's what happened is so these negative traits or these bad habits eventually transformed into something positive that were then automatically let go of because they were replaced by positive things 
and they led to actual useful experiences in the acquisition of knowledge and skills that actually were going in a, in a positive direction and set me up to achieve things that I wanted to achieve and really change as a person in many ways. So hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully you can take what I've said and apply it and integrate it within your own life and look at maybe bad habits that you have now and figure out how you can start where you are to at least incrementally over time make changes. Because if the mindset is, I'm here, but I have to be here, we're never going to do it. The fact that, oh, I have to make all these changes and I have to just not do what I do, we're never going to, we're not going to do that. Most people will not do that. And that's why most people don't make the changes. Some people actually have really strong willpower and strong focus. They can do that. I've done that in many times in my life where I was like, now I'm vegetarian. Just one day I remember I made that decision. I just said, okay, now this is what I'm doing. And I did it. Didn't, didn't waver, didn't doubt it, didn't do anything. I've had so many chapters in my life where I just said, okay, this is what I'm doing now. I don't think that's necessarily having willpower or whatever. I don't know. It's just, I think at least for me, it was just being not maybe naive and dumb. So maybe being naive and dumb is, can be a great, way to get things done and achieve things as well because if you just don't think about it and you just do it that can sometimes be useful but for most of us most of the time we're going to say we want to do something and then our mind will start inventing all these things but if we can start where we are and at least reorient and change our direction or change our um our attitude slightly which then that adjustment over time will move in a different direction and then that is more sustainable over the long term. And then eventually we can, it'll reach a critical mass where all the positivity will just push out the negativity and we'll be in a different place really in some ways without that much effort or trying and strife and struggle, but just a little bit incremental things over time. So anyways, hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully it's been useful and I will talk to you soon.